Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn patching or updating always on availability group replicas in SQL Server part one. There's going to be three or four parts of this process. In part one, we'll be learning number one, patching or updating always on availability group best practices. And uh, there are a few best practices that I have written down uh, and I'll show you in a second. Number two, general steps to update patch availability group replicas in SQL Server. Number three, overview of the configuration of uh, AG groups in SQL Server. I'll take you to SI, uh, SQL Server Management Studio in my environment and I'll show you the configuration of my environment. My configuration may be different than yours, uh, so but um, uh, I'll show you the configuration that is set in my environment and you can uh, basically compare it with your configuration. Uh, number four, where to change configuration settings according to the best practices. So um, what I did was I have written down right here in MS Word and I'll be sharing this MS Word on our website so that you can take a look at, or you can download that from there. So first thing up here is patching, updating best practices for availability groups. Number one, make sure manual failover to one of your synchronous commit replica is successful. These steps, best practices, uh, you should really perform before you um, upgrade or patch your availability group replicas. So uh, this is the first thing that you need to do. Uh, you need to manually fail over your uh, synchronous. If you have synchronous um, replicas, um, I'll show you that where those settings are. But uh, if it is synchronous, you need to make sure that uh, you manually fail over uh, to your uh, secondary replicas and see all the databases uh, come online and everything is working fine before you start patching or updating. Number two, uh, take the backup of your databases. Obviously, this is uh, uh, just in case something goes wrong, you have a choice to roll back and um, restore your databases. Number three up here, uh, do run DBCC after you uh, manually fail over or on your primary replica because uh, make sure that uh, there is no consistency error when you manually fail over to your um, uh, secondary replicas or um, you um, move back or fail back your uh, uh, availability groups. Number four, uh, upgrade remote replicas. Uh, this is where um, there are different type of settings, there are different type of architecture that uh, uh, different companies set. So I'm going to try to cover all the architectures. This architecture is that let's say that you have a remote replica uh, that you're uh, replicating your database to an availability group. Make sure that uh, you basically upgrade your remote replica. The thumb rule here and very important thing is that you never ever uh, update your primary replica uh, uh, in any case. Otherwise, you will be looking at downtime. So that's why the four is important. Make sure that you up upgrade your remote replica if you have any. Um, then local secondary replicas and primary should be updated in the end to avoid any potential application downtime. So this is very important. Number five up here, redirect your backup preferences if secondary replica the reason number five is important that if you have set up um, your backup preferences that secondary only keep in mind that when you're updating your secondary replica that will not be able to take your backups so make sure that i'll show you that in uh, sql server management studio as well but make sure that uh, you um, redirect your backups to the other uh, secondary replicas where uh, which which you're not basically uh, updating at the moment so your backup will run during this process so you you need to basically do back and forth um, about this um, backup references let's say that one of the secondary replica is um, <coughs> updated and everything is working fine you can redirect your backup to that secondary replica uh, and go ahead and uh, update or patch your other uh, remaining secondary replicas Number six up here, remove automatic failover from AG to prevent unintended failover during patching or upgrade. If automatic failover is set in your environment, you should make it manual failover because otherwise, if something goes wrong, uh, AG is going to uh, failover uh, automatically. It's going to try to failover automatically to the uh, secondary replicas and that will not be good. So number seven up here, if you have synchronous commit uh, replica, manually uh, fail over AG to the to that secondary replica. Now, this is again the architecture that if you have a different AG architecture, what you need to do is there are certain um, in SQL Server 20, 
14, there are, you can have two synchronous uh, secondary replica. Uh, in SQL Server 16, you can have three synchronous uh, secondary replica. So if you have um, synchronous commit replica, secondary replica, you make sure that you manually fail over and everything come um, uh, alive up there and everything is working. So number seven is important. All these steps are very important and you need to uh, basically perform these before you start patching or updating um, <coughs> your um, availability group replicas. Number eight up here, uh, if you have any monitoring alerts set up on your availability group environment, you need to make sure that uh, uh, they are uh, disabled because uh, otherwise you, since you are uh, basically patching or updating, you don't want uh, unnecessary uh, monitoring or alerts because you will be failing uh, availability group back and forth. You will be resuming your da uh, uh, database of availability group. You will be basically, a uh, lot of things will happen during the uh, patching or updating process. So you don't want uh, your operation to be busy and get worried about that you they're getting a lot of alerts in your production environment. Number nine up here is disable replication. If you configure replication with always on availability group, because um, there would be, if you don't um, disable replication in your environment, what's going to happen is ref replication is going to break and it might go into uh, un solvable issue as far as replication goes. Replication is not easy to troubleshoot. So my advice to you is that go ahead and disable the replication. The disabling replication is you you can't just right click on replication and disable it. You have to remove the replication and set that back in. So make sure that um, you disable replication if uh, it is configured with your always on availability group databases. So these are basically the best practices before you start updating and some are that how to update and what to do, um, you know, best practices in availability group uh, replicas. Next step up here we're gonna do is general process step. So th these, uh, this is general, this is uh, not really uh, tied to uh, any architecture. So this is just the general in any architecture availability group replica architecture. These general steps will be taken so uh, I thought that um, we'll take an overview of general process steps. So number one up here is remove automatic failover on all synchronous commit secondary replicas. Number two, upgrade all remote and secondary, secondary node. As I said that never try to uh, upgrade or patch primary replica in the beginning. Number three, manually failover AG to update secondary replica. Make sure everything is working fine before you start primary replica. This is very important right here. You have to make sure that uh, everything came online on the secondary replica that you just updated. So um, if there is an issue, you should not attempt to upgrade your primary replica. Otherwise, you will be looking uh, long downtime for your production applications. Number five up here, update primary replica. That is once you make sure that secondary replica is fine. Manually fail back AG to primary replica and make sure that everything is working on primary as well. And that is after the upgrade. Number eight up here is configure automatic failover synchronous commit if it was already done. Uh, keep in mind that um, um, it is very important that you take synchronous commit out before you start updating or patching because you want to make sure that you have control when to fail over your availability group. So next thing is let's go ahead and take a look on availability group different settings and um, what to change right here, the where to change configuration setting according to the best practices. So here's my uh, uh, server. I have set up availability group right here. This is my availability group sales order AG. If you right click on availability group, let me go ahead and show you first that what I have. Availability replicas, I have two replicas right here, primary replica and secondary replica. This replica right here is my local secondary replica. There is a difference between local secondary replica and remote secondary replica. If they, the local secondary replica is if they're in the same VLAN as far as um, a network goes, then it would be a local uh, secondary replica. But if they are in different VLAN, but same uh, clustering, you have added as a node and made that a secondary replica, especially in Azure, if, if, if uh, your secondary replica is Azure, that's considered as a remote uh, secondary. So I have uh, just a local secondary uh, on-premise uh, and primary right here. 
I have one database that is in availability group databases. I have set up the listener right here as well. This is my um, AG setup. So in order to go and see where things needs to be changed, let's go ahead and right click on availability groups. Go to the properties. First, you will see that uh, the general uh, properties of availability groups right here. This is very important. These are the available available replicas right here and their roles right now in my case this guy is secondary and this guy is primary and this is what I was talking about availability modes uh, right now I have set asynchronous and asynchronous both but if you have synchronous commit right here you want to make sure that it goes to asynchronous before you um, basically uh, upgrade your uh, replicas or patch your replicas um, Failover mode, this is what I was talking about. If it's automatic, you want to make sure that it's manual. So right here, that's the setting that we need to do. And <clears throat> allow connection. Rest everything really does remain the same. Other important thing to consider is right here, backup preferences. So in my case, in my environment right here, I have set up backup on secondary only. So what it means when I say secondary only, my backup will run only on secondary. If none of the secondary is available, uh, my backup will fail. So in my case, I have only one secondary. So if that secondary I'm updating or patching, I should make sure that I change this setting to primary only or preferred secondary. That way I know that my backup will run fine during uh, my secondary replica upgrade or patch. Um, right now, my configuration says that if I'm working on secondary uh, uh, replica, my backup will fail for sure. So this is where you need to come in before you start updating your secondary. You need to change the backup preferences and make sure that uh, either it is, uh, if you have multiple uh, secondary, you need to redirect that. Um, and uh, this, this setting will work. But uh, I would say that you go ahead and click on prefer secondary. That way uh, your backup will be redirected to the secondary that's available. If you have one remote secondary, then you want to make sure that your backup are on primary. And um, up here, priorities, you want to make sure that uh, the, the um, priority of the replica that you're updating is zero or you can go ahead and exclude that replica from here if you have multiple secondary. So these two things are really important as far as, um, you know, your updating and patching goes. Uh, and this, this is part one, and uh, we'll be going into part two, part three, and part four, uh, covering different architecture of always on availability group, and I'll be patching it live with you and see what kind of issues uh, we run into or, um, if everything goes fine. I'll be following the best practices as well. So stay tuned. I hope this best practices part one helped.